pleasant here in the northwest of Ireland. A uh, few things I can talk about today so you can, you can stick on the kettle. Hey baby, you can put your kettle on. Ah, you can put your kettle on. Oh baby, and a plate of fig rolls. Oh baby, you can put the kettle on. Yeah, you can dip my tea bags in, stir my milk, yeah, baby. Yeah. See, I, I, I invented uh, tea and cake porn a long time ago. Uh, tea and confectionery porn a long time ago. So I guess, you know, I haven't changed really, have I? Anyway, yeah. So, first few things to talk about. First thing. Gonna get a, a wee bit esoteric today. I'm glad everyone's uh You can put the kettle on, oh baby. Yeah, you can put the kettle on. I'm glad everyone there uh, is happy uh, with the, the the thing that I gave a nice reception to my sort of like restoration of the Celtic spirit idea throughout the world. And uh, because it's probably the longest holding, oldest surviving continuous culture in the West. So it's that's why it's so important to all other cultures. If you are of Slavic, Hellenic, Germanic, Norse, Iberian, any of the Indo-European, Ugar Ugaric, any of the Indo-European cultures, you have to, you should cherish the Celtic one too because the Celtic fringe that I spoke about are the ones who preserved a lot of the myths you guys lost under the Romans and, and particularly Lutherism and things like that. So you owe the Celts a debt of gratitude. I mean, Tolkien certainly did and, and, and to a lesser extent the Norse, but the Celtic peoples more so because they were, co their, their common, common, Linguistic and artistic styles were they weren't all a big race. They were all different races, but they shared a very, a, a very common linguistic and artistic style, which survives to this very day. So, so the the the, uh, the peoples and the lands of the Celtic fringe are a, a direct past back to the ancient past of all you European peoples. So that's why you you must you know be grateful that we we have that. I am. Even if I wasn't Celtic, a heritage, and I have some Viking heritage too, and some Anglo-Saxon heritage and Iberian heritage, I would, uh, I'd be grateful for that surviving too. So thank you for the the kind and gracious reception for that. Now back to our regular broadcasting ish. So anyway, there was a comment left on the video yesterday, uh, the video about you know the seamless. Where I call the seamless transition, whatever they call the video, how the ones who were fired up and had a rush from the the Rona are now fired up and rush have a rush from the um, the events in the Ukraine. And there was a person left a uh, left a message, which really pissed me off, because it shows how governments. And and the Irish government in particular, but the government everywhere, are de determined to feed these events. Government today is nothing more than the organisation of consecutive mass hysterias in perpetuity. That's all they do. They do nothing else. And that's all for the simple reason of keeping government going. That's its only purpose. See, the purpose of government in the West today is not to work as an administrative body for the running of the nations. It's to keep the political system going. And the best insurance they all have for kept keeping the political establishment going is for all of them to emulate the same globalist bullshit. Okay? Mandates. So let's talk about what so this person had the comment. And it's about the refugee thing. The war refugee thing. And they said that they had booked they had booked a hotel room in the North Star Hotel 
in Amiens Street in Dublin. Now the North Star Hotel, that that Amiens Street, Talbot Street, it's a pre, quite a seedy area. And I, it, and even when I was a kid, it was a seedy area. Uh, the thing is, I used to be a record shop. Then I bought my very first record when I was nine. It was Life on Mars by David Bowie. Uh, but it's always been a, a kind of a, a kind of a run down kind of. It's never really caught on. And but the thing is that the one of the main train stations, Connolly, is there. So a lot of people who come into the city from the north and the northwest arrive at that station. It's also a big commuter station too, as well. And the North Star Hotel is right across. I think it's got a different name now. It used to be called the North Star Hotel. But uh, it's across, it used to be the Great Northern Hotel, I think, before that. The railway company that built the station, the original railway company. And I stayed there one or two times myself after I missed the late, the last train home to Sligo and got caught, caught my knickers down and had no way to get back home. And I just get a room there real quick. It's an okay hotel. I mean, if it's nothing wrong with it. It's, 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 so it's just, you know, it's nice. It's nothing special, but it's, it's nice enough, you know. So anyway, they booked a room in the hotel to, sit, to attend the Comic Con the big comic book convention which is around the corner well around the corner down the road by the river it's a bit of a walk in the, the national convention center and uh so they were all planning to go to see the the comic con and got a message from the hotel and i think they only found out by accident that the hotel had cancelled all the previous bookings and had filled out all the rooms according to the government to stock refugees from Ukraine. So anyone who had booked a room at the hotel to go visit the city or, or just anything, suddenly found themselves without a hotel room or were told to get alternative accommodation. Now this suggests that the government is throwing, now throwing enormous amounts of money at hotels, which is what I said would happen. I said that this would, it's, you probably have, the refugee thing is probably hoteliers lobbying the government uh, because they've lost, they've lost out on their direct provision thing. Because now if you're a, 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 an immigrant, see Ireland has an open borders immigration policy. Anyone can come in, can come in now if they want, except Irish Americans who don't have a great grandmother. A serious, I'm joking. If you if you're an Irish American and you own, you can't find your great grandmother's birth certificate, you can't come to Ireland. You can't visit, or you can visit, but you can't stay. But if you're uh, you, you, Mufasa, you Uganda, from uh, Western Africa, you you get a house, uh, you get children's allowance, and you get uh, you get social welfare benefits and anything else you need. And uh, so that's we don't only have an open door immigration policy. We have an open door social welfare system too. And Ireland has a spectacularly good welfare system by any standards. It's a Scandinavian level welfare system. I mean, during the Rona, they were giving people 350 euros a week just to sit home on their arses. And so that's what's happening. And so the government is throwing money at these hotels who are canceling their previous bookings, which is disgraceful, actually. Absolutely disgraceful. And but it's all part thing. I'm sure you don't like the poor babies from Ukraine. What are you going to be? You can go see it. You can go. You can go. To, you can just see the fuckers now. You know, like you know. But I, I, myself and my girlfriend had booked a room to go to the com comic convention. Ah, so you don't care about the poor little children from Ukraine, you dirty evil bastard! Yeah, you can go see your comic books anytime. In the comic books down the shop, in there. You can go. Uh, well, look, a grown man like you, a grown man like you, and you're interested in comic books. What's wrong with you? You know, that's what you'd be dealing with. The poor children from Ukraine. You know, that kind of thing. And uh, they don't understand that Irish people have to live their lives too. You see, this is the whole thing too. The Irish people have been told, your lives have been discarded. Okay? Have been discarded in order to make way for the latest consecutive crisis that government is using to keep itself in power. And that's why in Ireland we don't have a democracy right now. We have, or anything meaningful, we have this, the three three parties sharing, including the two main allegedly rival parties, now sharing the government. So basically they came up with a scan saying, we don't have to worry about re-elections anymore. What we'll do is we'll just, we'll form coalitions and we'll all be in power. It's a total scam, total fucking scam. And this is why I'm, 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 I hate democracy and everything it stands for. But... Uh, <coughs> 
but they have to keep that going and how they keep that going is crisis and they can't say well we have to have the three main parties empowered we have to have a coalition of all the main parties because the country's in crisis at the moment and it's all about jobs for the boys and no one ever have the no one ever winning the place in government or earning it it comes from the same culture that you know everyone gets a medal for showing up and you know, showing up on a sports field in your kit gets you a medal. It doesn't matter if you you won or lose or anything, and that's now extended to all aspects of life. And also, it's, it's extended a generation that didn't have it when they were growing up. That everyone's a pussy now. I mean, I'm amazed by some of the the pussy. Me- I know I'm always talking about this, but that I mean, cowardice is the the lubrication of Western society. But some of the things I see online just amaze me. Like a few, about a year ago, I was on an Irish music, I may have spoken about this, on an Irish music group, and I just mentioned about an Irish band, Skid Row, not the American Skid Row, there was an Irish version of Skid Row, they were kind of like a blues rock band from the early, late 60s, early 70s, Gary Moore was in them for a bit, and I said, I don't like their sound, I don't like that, I don't like that that sound i don't think there is yeah they were unique in ireland there wasn't many bands like them at the time but i don't think their records are very good even in the spirit of the age it just it was just a, a critique some like all these this one this one guy probably in his 50s writes goes i'm really disturbed by these comments i thought this was a safe place to come and talk about irish music i've never seen so much hate in my life that's what he actually wrote and I said, hold on a second. I didn't say I hated the band Skid Row. I said, I didn't really like it. I don't think it's very good. I think there, for even for the period, it, it doesn't, it sounds amateurish almost. And he left the group and others were saying, look, he drove that man off the group. And they said, I'm leaving this group too. It's full of hate. Hate? Critiquing a band is hate? See, and they would have been fellas in their 50s and maybe 60s. And they've all developed this soft soft boy attitude as well there was another group i used to go on this guy was repairing uh and he had a great channel very well done repairing old-fashioned electric motors and uh he, he was he his main shtick in the thing was he used a remagnetizer to remagnetize the the power in the in the motors and this one guy left the comment on the video saying the only he says I love your videos, but remagnetizers are quite expensive, and they're outside the budget of the average ordinary person. As good as they are, and your videos are great, but neodin- neodymium magnets you can buy that are not only as powerful as the replacement magnets in the motors, but even more powerful again. They'll actually make the, mo- the motor more powerful without drawing ex- any extra current. And he goes ar- and and he goes around and goes. Uh, he starts talking about no, no. This uh, 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 because if he puts a post up saying, for two years I put up one hundred and sixty videos uh, of me repairing motors, and this one troll comes on and starts going on about how I'm doing it wrong, and then the guy comes on again. You, I didn't say you were doing it wrong. Please, please, please don't under, please mis- misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. I love your channel, what you do is great, but I'm just pointing out that remagnetizing machines are quite expensive, but you can actually, as an alternative, use a neodymium magnet, which is just as, just even better, but cheaper than actually investing in, if you're only fixing one motor, what do you need a remagnetizing machine for? And the guy posts on the needed, and he says, you, you, give your, you, you give your time and effort to give people something on YouTube and they don't appreciate it. And then he, he, he shut down his channel and took 160 videos down simply because a guy said with, in, without any kind of nastiness or any kind of condescension or any kind of bullshit, he turned around and said, yeah, your videos are great, but there's another way of doing it too also that might save people money. And, and the, this is this, we see this everywhere. And, and we see this everywhere. You, you're not allowed to have an opinion because it hurts someone's feelings. So that person who went, who's had their had their rooms cancelled at the hotel in Dublin, if they were to call up and say, you know, I had booked this, myself and my girlfriend were really looking forward to going to Comic Con, it's hard enough to get a hotel room in central Dublin, and it's expensive, 
I can't believe you did this. Why didn't you wait till all your previous bookings were done before you turned over all the rooms to Ukrainian refugees? And they would write back and probably say something like, you're a hateful person. You hate the Ukrainian babies. This is like what we're like today. Well, we're not, we're the tribe, we're not like this. But this is what you're dealing with today. This is what you're dealing with. Uh, this this fake morality of pretending that uh, people care when really they're just using it as an excuse to put you down through this this hollow platitudes, through this fakeness. It's just uh, an excuse to have a go at you, to belittle you, while pretending that they're a victim. See, the, the ultimate thing of the victim complex is to use it as a hammer to put down the people that claim you're, they're being, they're being victimised by. And being victimised today is pu merely just having another opinion. And it's a, it's a beautiful way governments have, this, have invented of shutting down even harmless dissent, even regular critique. I mean, I see it all the time online. Someone will turn around and say, I don't like the new U2 album. You haters. No, no, hold on a second. The hatred and not liking an album is not the same thing. I've noticed that too. That, that, that they're all, they all, at the odd morning, jump from cr uh, criticism, which is critique, uh, evaluation, is now hatred. It's now declared hatred. It's, it's really something else when you think about it. It's now declared hatred. There's a person in the car next to me watching me and they think I'm nuts talking to myself. But uh, uh, I, guess I, I guess I am talking to myself, but it's, it's just funny. But uh, that's another thing too. They don't mind. The, the, the whole thing of like, you know, keep your distance, don't do this, wear a mask, has made people police each other after all that stuff has ended. They now all watch each other, you know, if you notice that. They now all police, oh, look, he, he, he doesn't, well, he wouldn't have taken an interest in them before. I mean, this is, again, governments have all done this. Governments are pure evil. Have you figured that one out yet? Have you figured out how that governments are pure evil? That politics is pure evil. This is why you should never be left-wing, never be right-wing. This is why you should be beyond all that stuff. Uh, and just, you know, politics would be, you know, be fine if it was just for the purpose of administration of a nation. But it's not. It's a self-serving demonic beast that keeps itself in power. Speaking of demonic beasts, I saw this film last night. It was pretty good. Uh, called The Unholy. It only came out last year. And it's about... It's one of the, the better, more kind of enjoyable horror films I've seen lately. And it takes place in... Excuse me. present day rural Massachusetts and it's about a failed alcoholic journalist from Boston who just by sheer chance is he's, he's studying a UFO alien abduction story that turns out to be bogus in this rural community and it turns out that while he's there there's a young deaf girl who has a vision of the Virgin Mary at this tree and she's able to speak and uh, again, and then suddenly she's able to cure people. But it turns out that it's not the Virgin Mary. It's an Irish witch who had been put to death in the 1800s uh, for doing magic. And she had pretended to be the Virgin Mary in order to get back at the, the community who persecuted her. So that classic story, you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, it, it's really well done. It's quite well done, though. And the, the guy who plays the main character is good. But it's... Uh, I made a video a few years ago saying about these Marian apparitions. Be very careful of them. If you go to Knock here in Ireland, where the Virgin Mary was supposed to have appeared on a wall, it could have been anything from a magic lantern to... Um, you know, some kind of fairy thing to anything. But there's a terrible demonic energy in Knock. A horrible demonic energy in that town. And it's an awful place. Now, if you... That's... I, my, my theory was, you know, especially after looking at the Fatima thing in Portugal, with those two kids dying in the same year, and the other one being scurried off to a nun. And there's, a, there's good theories that those kids were probably murdered. And what those kids reported 
was nothing like, you know, the Marian apparition of the Virgin Mary, the classic imagery. The image was like they, they saw a three foot tall uh, squeaking entity that had no hair like a kind of a gin fairy kind of experience and that area was under fatima was a one of the i think it was it was either muhammad's wife or mother one of them that's how it's named after that was that was in the islamic caliphate in the in the iberian caliphate under the moors so the place is crawling in gins and it's caves all over there but the whole thing was that the, the catholic the jesuits took it over and made up a story that it was all about. It was. It wasn't. It was a. Cla if anyone, the, the Virgin Mary did not appear to Fatima. What appeared to Fatima was truly remarkable, and it did predict the future. And spiritualist groups in Porto and Lisbon even had a, put an, an ad in the newspaper saying something is going to happen at the end of the month. Messages. Are, it was a demonic thing. Some that was, and this demon appeared in front of them, and it caused all. It was a tremendous thing. But the film was about that kind of the unholy. That the more energy put people put into it, the more the demon was fed by the energy. And that's what the miracle is in this film, The Unholy. So that's like when the miracle of the sun happened at Fatima and things like that. They were feeding the energy into the entity that appeared. And uh, this, anyone who dealt with, like the, the St. Bernard that rotted away from cancer at Lourdes after her marrying an apparition, it goes on and on. But when I was a child, the most terrifying film I've ever, I've ever seen, the most terrifying film I've ever seen as a child, was actually a religious film that was supposed to be beautiful called The Song of Bernadette. And when the Virgin Mary appeared in that film, I used to scream and run out of the room. And at the very end of the film, there's a terrifying scene where the actress playing St. Bernadette is dying and the Virgin Mary appears in the corner of the room. It is the most terrifying thing you've ever seen. You want to see a horrifying horror film? Go see The Song of Bernadette. I think Vincent Price is in it, funny enough, even though it's not a horror film. But uh, go see that film. And uh, it scared, it scared the, the visions of the Virgin Mary terrified the shite out of you. And it used to terrify me as a kid. And it was almost like I, I knew these things were not what they were supposed to be. They were imposters. And evil always finds a way to dress up as an imposter of salvation and hope in order to feed your energies off you. I'm not off us in the tribe, but I mean, I've pet people in general. And that's what's going on in the world with the... That's why I say get rid of the TV in the corner of your room. It's a doorway to hell. And it's some fucking smart ass saying yes. Then, well, you, well, we must watch TV and you know all about current affairs. No, no. See, we have this newfangled thing called the internet. You may have heard of it. And, you know, when you're on social media, sometimes stories come up. Try it sometime, you know. You can also make a fire without rubbing two sticks together. You know, some smart ass trying to be clever. Uh, I haven't had a TV since 2002. And uh, in, in the living room. If I watch a film, I... I watch it online, but I won't say where. And uh, I, or I, have a, I have a very big DVD collection, which you should have too. DVD is a very good format to collect and you can pick up films real dirt cheap. But anyway, um, so the imposter always uh, shows themselves as the set of salvation. So that's what the governments are doing. We're saving you from Vladimir Putin. We're saving you from a slightly more virulent seasonal flu. We are, and it's all done to lock you deeper into your prison. That's all it is. It's evil. Evil as, as a savior. Now, that got me, and I was looking at the way everyone's all fucked up on oil prices at the moment, right? Everyone's all screwed up on oil. That's a very complex thing. And they're trying to blame it on Putin and stuff like, bang, the oil prices and stuff like that, right? But is it, oil has an interesting esoteric history. Now, we're going to get real fucked up now here, right? Uh, don't only put the kettle on, baby, but you can put the kettle on, you can put the stew pot on, you can put the fucking whatever on, bake a fucking cake, baby. You know, we're going to get real fucking esoteric now, you know. And um, there's something odd about oil, okay? Now, when, when the automobile thing first happened, 
and you had Henry Ford building Ford T's and people all around the world start driving cars and petroleum and petroleum derivatives became the fuel of choice for not only transport but manufacturing because it really was a miracle fossil fuel. It was just something that existed. It was like coal. It was like fertilizer. It was like just a thing. It was just around. There was no great mystique attached to oil. It came out of the ground in Texas. It came out of the ground in California. It came out of the ground in the Caucasus and a few other places around the world. But oil was just oil, just oil. It was just a thing. It was nothing that had any particular power over humanity or mystique. It was not something that people had an emotional relationship with it. Fuel was fuel. It was just oil, petroleum, gasoline, kerosene, whatever, aviation fuel. Then oil was discovered in the Middle East, in the land of the jinn from deep in the earth of Arabia and suddenly oil takes on a very different nature. Oil becomes something that is attached to the emotional and psychological health of the Western psyche. And I know a lot of that had to do with the Arab-Israeli conflict that came, that was dwelling at the same time, but the dependency on oil from the Arab countries was very peculiar. It suddenly oil had a control over our destiny. And it came from the land of the jinn. And suddenly oil was more than just a fuel that was just there. It was the dominant thing of life and you people when King Fad cut off the oil reds oil wells in 73 and caused the Arab oil crisis people lined up to get petroleum and gasoline oil became a pathological entanglement with the human consciousness gin fluid it was almost like the gin was behind the oil that was coming from the Middle East and that oil went into everything plastic products records music Albums, I mean, clothing, you name it. That gin fluid from the Middle East was going into everything. And Western man became increasingly neurotic. Now, my old good friend, lamented friend, Dino Crane was an oil man. And he told me what happened at Deepwater Horizon thing in the Gulf. Which is interesting because Jason has been on 313 has been talking a lot about a lost civilization in the Gulf just off the coast of New Orleans where the Mississippi meets the, meets the Gulf and Enoch Crane told me that they dug oil out of the Deepwater Horizon thing was a cover story because they removed oil from the ground that was alive and the thing was living it reacted and this is why the militaries all over the Europe went crazy in America sent warships and everything and eventually this thing was coming out of, the, out of the ocean and spreading across like a large area. It seemed to have, no, and it was, it was a, it, if they touched it or it moved, it ran away. It was alive. This thing was like a gigantic animal. And it was killed by the, a French submarine who fired some kind of large weapon at it, a torpedo or something. And it, well, that was, that, wow, that was very weird. While I was talking about the gin and the oil thing, the phone, the phone died. And uh, it's, it's full of power, there's like 80 something percent of it. That's never happened to me before where the phone died like that. Very peculiar. But anyway, this relationship we have with oil now, I wonder did you two pull the stream, uh, whatever, it doesn't, that was weird. But uh, the relationship that we have with oil to this day is a wickedness. If oil didn't come from the Middle East, I wonder if we would just treat it the same way we treat other things, just as a commodity and not something that has this mystique and psychological and almost, you know, life survival entanglement with it. Is it the fluid of the gin that's being used to pollute the mind of Western men? Mm -hmm. So anyway, 
there's something for you to think about. I'll, I'll end this thing now because I don't trust it. But uh, I might make another video later on. I had a few more things to talk about, but I don't trust this now. So uh, take care of yourselves. Love you all. Sanguine Gnosis. And uh, we'll talk later. Very interesting. Spooky. You can put your kettle on. You can put your kettle on.